Started my first startup in 97. The world told me I was insane. Our goal is creating future economies that are more regenerative and sustainable. Something didn't match up. Why hasn't this become the next big thing? And that's where we invested. The whole purpose of achieving anything in life is measurement. We have one final session coming right off. Uh, you're, you're following up Terrence Murphy, uh, former NFL player. But I'm telling you what, uh, this next this next conversation is going to be great. Optimal Technology Corporation uh, has developed a really cool device that's going to help save energy costs. Um, I, I'm probably going to butcher the, the stats, but I think it's I want to say it's 30 to 60 percent uh, annually in energy costs. But I'll let him go through the details. But with this this device, you're going to be able to really save on on electricity. So, I'll give a brief intro of the session, and then I'll talk about Reg Reg Parker. So, commercial and industrial building owners, as well as their occupants, have various needs with electrical costs and the maintenance of key equipment as two very important items. Technology can help you save over thirty percent on costs and extend equipment life by up to 50%. The set, this session right now is gonna be designed to help you understand how to do this as an owner rather than as an en energy engineer or a facility manager. So in essence, uh, how do we take the, the manual day-to-day -day procedures from a facilities manager and use technology to, to optimize and automate a lot of those processes? So we've got Reginald Parker. He's the founder and CEO of Optimal Tech. He's a shadow portfolio company, and he's going to be talking about how to manage your energy costs like a boss, talking about energy management software as a service. With that, Reg, I'll pass it over to you and let you take it off. Hello, everyone. I'm Reg Parker, as Ian just uh, shared. Um, this is Optimal Technology Corporation. Uh, again, we're trying to help folks lower their energy costs, but let's understand what the problem is. An energy manager gets paid $80,000 a median salary a year. They monitor um, all of your key equipment, they maintain them, and they manage your energy flow. Uh, that may mean uh, turning up something, turning off AC when people go home, setting regiments for lights, and the whole nine. Main issue is, is that for mo most low, small to medium sized commercial building owners, uh, they have a need for the energy manager, but they do not have the budget. So what are you used to do if you have the need or the budget? Or you want to automate energy management um, if you're a large company so that that energy manager doesn't have to remember everything. Well, with energy management, you wanna keep your costs low. You wanna secure the performance of your equipment. And what that starts with is understanding which pieces of equipment are actually uh, the ones you should follow. There are great rules of thumbs, but you should actually use a data informed process. And that includes actually taking CTs, um, uh, which helps you to see the energy flow and figure out which pieces of equipment are driving your energy costs, understanding how those energy costs are, are actually seen. Is it just in generation or is it in demand, the amount of power that you need to run certain pieces of equipment? And then the last thing is now that you know which pieces of equipment um, cost a lot of money and drive your energy costs, you wanna extend the life through proper management. Um, and, and maintenance of that equipment. And that comes from a data-driven approach. So if you were to survey energy costs, you'll find out that equipment and utility costs are number three and number four. And of utility costs, the major burden there is energy. So uh, energy is driven by equipment and equipment and energy drives your cost of all of the costs that a business were to see. So the way we're gonna define energy costs is simple. The amount of energy used either in KW or KWH and the price of that energy um, per 
KW, KWH. Together, that's your energy cost. So a scam across all industries, whether or not we're talking about public economy, uh, you'll see that lighting is real big, heating has its place, so is cooling, ventilation, and if you add all of them together with hot water, that's HVAC, that's a, a large portion of your energy, and then there's other costs, depending on what type of business you're in. So, you know, you can't use rules of thumbs, you actually have to understand your specific um, uh, use case. So the first thing that I recommend is to use energy better. It's a little phrase that I use, use energy better, use better energy. To use energy better, there's a wide array, array of energy efficiency technology. It's more than just bulbs and caulking. Um, there's a lot more out there now where you have automated light switches, uh, you have regulated um, uh, valves, and now you're able to use um, uh, uh, what we call a gateway or IoT device that talks to various smart appliances, the cloud, and regulates your energy accordingly. So now in terms of using energy better, and we've talked about KW and KWH, I wanted to show you randomly um, a bill. And you'll see that there's distribution demand charges and transmission charges. And you'll see that that makes up very near half of this person's bill. The other part is how much energy or electricity that they use. Um, and that's in KWH and you'll see it's tranched first by for distribution energy charges by KWH of 2000 and then by 9120. The, these are the riders in which this particular customer signed on. And Given that this is the amount in demand, demand is augmented and controlled through smart battery and storage technology. The other piece and energy and um, other energy pieces, that's where energy efficiency and other um, strategies are used. And you can see over in the bottom left-hand corner, the kilo kilowatt hours on a year um, fluctuates from a high of 27,680 to a low, uh, I mean, actually a high of 33,20 and a low of 15,680. But the demand charges stay in the realm of 57.6 to 66.4. Not as much spread. Um, it doubles on KWH and pretty much stays fixed um, on demand. So what are you to do with that information? Well, uh, you need to also use the man, uh, be, use better energy. Now, when Ian talked initially, um, the low case that people can save is 30%, but using this two-tier approach, you usually can get up to 60%, sometimes 70% savings. Now, energy monitoring is not enough. This is, you know, what you get for energy monitoring. How many kilowatt hours you used last week? Uh, what the cost was on average. Uh, was this a $10 day or a $20 day, um, et cetera? You can't make good decisions if you don't know how these KWHs are broken out. You need actually uh, more data. So what we do as energy management, where well, we are able to take that data um, put it into the cloud and now analyze it. And there are more and more companies doing that. Um, and what they share with you is if you had solar, how much you save because they're able to parcel out that. Um, they are able to look at the equipment life based on the pattern of energy. Um, you're able to see uh, maintenance activities based on um, how much your energy or let's say your HVAC has increased which may mean you need uh, the, uh, your filters replaced, and then how much you can save by doing lighting issues. Energy management is needed. Now, usually CapEx is a sticker shot for most folks. And they said, I don't wanna pay that amount of money. 
But if you finance it, just like you would finance the building or your your equipment um, fleet, um, you can turn CapEx into OpEx and you can um, structure your OpEx to be much lower than the energy cost that you are paying. And in doing so, we call this an energy saving structure. When you look at your baseline, we do an audit where we're able to look at your baseline energy costs over time and predict how it will increase over time. Um, then we look at a variety of ways of just saving your energy. The lo lower green is what your new energy costs will be. But in order to do that, upfront OPEX is paid by someone else. I mean, CapEx is paid by someone else who turns it into OPEX for you, and that uh, is paid over a certain contractual period of time. You still are able to maintain savings, and after that contract ends, there's usually an o and writer that's carried over to maintain your lower um, costs of energy, and there you're able to see even more cost savings. So this is a energy what they call an ESCO energy savings contract, which you can use as a way of financing your energy costs or your energy savings. This is part of how you manage your energy costs like a bus. Identify through an audit how much you can save. Have someone who's in that business become your energy manager and get into a contractual relationship with you, figure out what needs to happen and at the very end, continue to monitor these solutions for you. So um, there's a couple of things that I would like to say in addition to everything. Um, uh, LEED is a way of actually designing how much energy efficiency and renewable energy you would want by reaching certain tiers. So I say LEED or left behind. There's other organizations within the portfolio of shadow that um, um, can help you on lead. Uh, I always say, you know, set them, um, certain EGS goals and also DEI goals in doing so. Um, historically, um, there have been people, uh, uh, women and, and, and minorities who have been left out. So, you know, just a small little plug for me, um, just consider that when you're doing your EGS goals. And I wanna give you some facts about tier one equipment. This is considered bankability. And depending on how much you control of that, um, you may or may not get the best technology out there, but you will get the ones that the banks will fund. Um, for solar, as an example, uh, Bloomberg makes a tier one list um, and it's based on the amount uh, that the uh, customer group purchased of solar equipment last year. Doesn't mean that it's the best equipment, but the most purchased. And they also look at how big the balance sheet is. So if something goes wrong, the company is healthy enough to take care of it. And also based on how many people are purchasing it, it makes sense that we should purchase it too. So when you look at tier one equipment, it doesn't mean that it's the best. It means that it's a safe bet from a bank point of view. Uh, so you need to do um, the research there and understand um, your financing as well as your equipment options. So now EM sourcing strategies. Bottom line, perform an energy audit. This will help you to understand your energy needs now as well as anticipate your future energy needs. In general, energy grows at the pace of the economy at 2.4%. Build a profile of your energy manager. What do you need in the energy manager? Do you have high demand costs? Um, um, are they at 50 to 60%? Do you have a lot of pieces of equipment that needs to be um, um, understood? Or is your equipment old? Um, what is the structure of your building? Once you are able to build that profile of the energy manager you need, and you know how much your energy needs are, you can determine your budget. And either you hire an energy manager, or you can hire Nesco, or you can do it yourself. But as you see, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, and, and 
in ESCOs, there's two types. There's one that's led by people and one that's being automated. And so there's a richness of data when it's automated. There's a richness of experience when it's led by people. Uh, it's best of both, both worlds when you have people looking at the data and continuously making it richer. So I wanted to give a quick uh, 20 minute talk, uh, give you a sense of what was going on and then open it up for uh, questions. Um, so that's the, the, the structure of the presentation. Um, one of the things I'm not seeing Manav is uh, the questions from the chat. If you see any questions coming in for the chat, Manav, could you share that with me so that I may answer those questions? Yeah, I'm just going to jump in here as or well. Ian. I'm just going to remind all of our attendees, if you'd like to uh, ask any questions, uh, feel free to share your camera. Uh, I'll be happy to, to let you jump in. Uh, we do have one question from David, and you know, given that the fact that it's the last last session of the day, David, would you like to to share your camera and, and audio and ask your question? Uh, what you was, yeah. Let's, let's see if he wants to join in because he's got a question. Maybe there could be a good conversation here. Excellent. That's right. Yeah, he's working on it right now. And yeah, you know, we got it. We got to give it up to to Reg, right? He's in his car because he's out there working with clients and selling his technology. You know, he's part of our portfolio, so he's out there working hard. Uh, you know, this is the life of an entrepreneur. Uh, so I definitely can can relate to you know moving out around the city, trying to trying to make your company happen. So mad respect to to Reg for that. Uh, yeah, in actuality, Ian, we're looking at uh, deploying this for. Uh, uh, Airbnb customers, um, especially during lows, what are ways that they can actually lower their costs because these are real life costs that they have. Sometimes the clients leave on lights, they leave on this, that, and the other. So energy management is really key for that. It looks like Dave, David is, uh, he's re-logging re in. So I don't want to ask his question without him being here. Um, but I will also remind you, it looks like we've got about nine people who who are viewing this session right now. So please, if you'd like to ask a question of Reg, again, he's a shadow portfolio company. Reg Parker is, is an incredibly intelligent human being who's, who's built this company up. So he's got a lot of expertise on, on saving on energy costs and this device that he's developed with Optimal Tech. Uh, it's really going to revolutionize uh, facility uh, management. So take advantage of this opportunity to ask him any questions that you got. Thank you, Wayne, for that plug. It looks like Mark Tomrez, uh, he's got a question. Do you work with external financing partners that cover the CapEx financing? Yes, um, we have a variety of different uh, finance partners who, who help, whether or not it's solar, HVAC. Um, uh, sometimes banks are, are the ones, uh, including City, HSBC. Um, there's other organizations such as... Uh, Align cl uh, Climate Capital, um, and others that we work with the, um, to, to cover those costs. In fact, um, you know, if it's a lower cost than your current electricity, that is, that it just makes sense to finance. Uh, one of our customers was an international cus, uh, cus client, uh, the National Sports Center at, uh, in Bermuda. They paid $49,000 in electricity per month. So when we were able to buy capital equipment that would cost $28,000 plus O&M per month, it was a no brainer in financing them. If they can pay for 49, they can pay for 28. It pretty much takes them off grid and all they need for the energy costs is a um, high efficiency uh, heat pump, a uh, solar uh, microgrid and, uh, and all of those things in between. So. It was a great solution. Hey, David. Yeah, so David, I'll let you ask your question because I've been itching to ask this one and it's a good question. So I'll let you take it away. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Reg. Good to see you, Ian. Um, so the question was really around, um, what's the biggest barrier to adoption that you see? And I, 
I'm sure we could spend the rest of the time talking about a bunch of things, but I'll start with your biggest barrier to adoption, and then I'd love to have some follow-ups too. So, Ian, what I heard was, and I turned off my um, camera to lower my bandwidth, David, was what is the ba biggest bandwidth to adoption that I yeah, see? The biggest, the, your biggest barrier option. So what, what's the biggest thing that's preventing facilities from purchasing your tech and, and your software and implementing it? What, what, what is, have you seen as one of the biggest uh, objection, objections that you've heard? Uh, and then, you know, biggest barrier adoption globally. One of the things I get, David, is this is too good to be true. <laughs> and once we show them that it is true and it's not too good and that it's, there are incentives um, locally uh, by utilities and by the federal government to support this, it becomes a no-brainer. Um, Time, people actually having the time to, to look through and engage is usually the biggest barrier because uh, there's no upfront costs in most of the situations. So it's not like they have to make a, um, a budgetary a response. They just have to um, agree to move forward with us. Um, sometimes they like to hunt around and see if they can find a better deal. And um, that's very difficult for them to do. And so they end up coming back to us. Uh, what we we're trying to do is save them money, save uh, jobs and save the planet. And uh, we know that if we do it at volume, then uh, we'll be economically the champs. So, you know, we provide really good costs um, as a consequence. Others that's do as well, really but, awesome. You know, the biggest barrier is is getting people to commit quickly. Yeah, I can totally see that. And along those lines, have you had any adoption by any like public sector entities or villages or cities or towns or schools or universities? Well, our biggest client right now is in the hospitality sector, hotels. Um, we are um, working on a couple of universities in Virginia, um, but hotels and um, uh, Bacardi and uh, 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 the National Sports Center, t you know, those type of relationships tend to be our biggest now, and they're very large um, ticket uh, customers for right now. So, but we plan to build out those sectors, the mush market municipalities, universities, schools, and hospitals as we move forward. That sounds great. Thank you. No, thank you, David. So Ian, is yeah. there a, yeah, again, another yeah. question that I'm missing? Yeah, again, if anybody would like to join, it looks like we've still got nine uh, attendees on this session. You know, there's a, there's a lot that uh, can be implemented here from an energy cost savings perspective with Optimal Tech. Uh, and again, given that Reg is a portfolio company, maybe some questions around, you know, why he chose venture capital as for financing or the types of customers that he's, he's uh, addressing or what his total addressable market is. Anybody, if, if you have any questions, feel free to join in. Um, we still have some time in this session and happy to, to take any of those questions. I guess I'll ask a question, um, you know, the one that I, I just posed, which is when you were seeking financing, you know, obviously as a startup company, the best way, the best financing is customers, right? Uh, selling your product and then taking the revenue and reinvesting that into your business. At what point did you decide to go for venture funding and, and what what factors led to you making that decision? And what were some of the pros and cons that you weighed out in making that decision for venture financing? Two to three quick things. One, from a market perspective, uh, the global dynamics are that we have zero years left for climate change. And so this is not a, you know, I'll take my time and do this type of thing. Uh, second, uh, there are other organizations like, uh, let's say, Tesla, that when this becomes a big deal for them, they have way more capital to throw at it than I do. 
And so I need to scale uh, as quickly as possible to um, compete. Third, I have over a thousand hotels that I need to do almost immediately um, over the next two to three years. And, um, uh, you know, growing slowly doesn't make sense. So there is a, uh, uh, a urgency of need for me to uh, move forward. And so finding the right financial partners to do so was strategic. Um, a bank is not the right organization. Um, private equity is not the right organization. Uh, uh, venture capital is because uh, they're in it for the risk on technology like you are. Second, they have relationships that can actually help you grow uh, from a technological perspective as well as a market perspective. Specifically, Shadow was sought um, for their prop tech and their um, energy uh, or basically technology um, background um, and the relationships they, they had. So it's not just VC, it's the who in VC. I'm not looking for everyone in VC and I'm just not looking for VC dollars. I'm looking for a financial partner that's uh, willing to take the ride with me and um, be a good uh, friend as we travel. And those are some of the things that uh, you need to consider. Sometimes it's the bank that's your best partner. Sometimes it's private equity. In my case, uh, to scale um, as fast as possible to compete against other venture-backed organizations, um, um, I needed to, to have the right financial partner. Now, you asked about the total addressable market. Um, MIT and others estimate about $1.6 trillion wasted each year um, uh, because people are not using energy better or using better energy. And so um, that's a very large market to address. Um, in the US, it's $368 billion. Um, that's still a very large uh, market. And then if you cut it down only to uh, commercial buildings, it's around $38 billion. So regardless of how you uh, slice it, there's a lot of money being wasted um, because people don't have the right tech, um, they don't know the relationships, and they don't know that it can be financed. So it, it's a very attractive market for me to be in and grow in. Awesome. Uh, so I've got another question. Uh, since time is the biggest commitment, what does an audit look like for a business? How long does it typically take? And let's use a hundred thousand square square foot warehouse for as an example. First thing I'll do is ask for twelve months of utility bills. Uh, we run that through our algorithm. Um, that gives us what we need to look at when we um, um, walk the site. Um, right at the early stages of our company, we walk the site in addition to looking at the um, uh, data. From there, um, we're able to identify what are the key drivers of your electricity from um, day one, uh, come up with, and, and so the walk the site will take me three to four hours uh, for a site of that size. Um, uh, the, to run the algorithm, it doesn't take long. Um, that report uh, then gets back to uh, the person a few days after we walk the site and um, provides them an idea of what next. So it's not a very long engaged process. Uh, you know, it's and that's given to you by the utility um, and we run that through our algorithms because if uh, you have an issue with demand charges, then uh, we have to figure out what is, if, if using uh, microgrids or battery systems are going to greatly reduce your, um, um, your budget, your energy budget. And as again, run through our algorithms to come up uh, strategic way to reduce your bills. We also figure out if we can, you know, the age out of your equipment and give you an idea of when you're going to need to, to purchase new equipment and what type of impact that will have on your um, 
energy budget, capital, and it's just a few days. Great. Uh, that, no, I appreciate that, that that perspective, Reg. Is there are there any other questions that anyone would like to ask? We still have ten. We actually have uh, some additional attendees that have joined. Uh, we still have some time. If anyone would like to ask a question, you're also more than welcome to share your audio video. If you just click that red button in the top right right corner of the of the screen, you can share audio video. More than welcome to to join in and ask a question for Reg. So um, if you ask me a question, I missed it because uh, it, you blinked out on my screen for a second. Uh, did you ask a question, Ian? Yeah, no, we don't have, have one yet, but I just wanted to give uh, the opportunity for our attendees to ask a question. So if anybody has one. So, so look, um, energy, um, whether or not it's renewable or climate tech, is, is an important piece um, of the of the, the, the formula, whether or not you're developing new product projects or you already have a project, um, lowering that cost we saw in the hotel industry by um, tackling that they were, you know, average hotel was able to retain almost one uh, full-time equivalent job. So yeah, the, you know, lowering your energy costs um, not only saves you money, but sometimes saves jobs. Um, and yes, it does um, help in the carbon footprint. Um, we estimated that a thousand hotels would reduce 68,000 tons of CO2. So it, it can have a huge impact if you care about those things. You know, everybody cares about saving money and keeping good people, but there's a lot more so to that. You know, uh, there, there's clean air, clean water, and clean lands to. to um, um, think about and how doing this impacts all of those things and in the future well you know p possibly have a uh, a net benefit outside of the financial for you and your organization nice we've got another question from mark uh what's the gtm approach uh so yeah. i'll go to market strategy first is b2b um, again, uh, we, we have organizations uh, in the hotel industry. We have a couple of solar farms that uh, folks want us to work on. There's some uh, EV uh, uh, power station charging grids called e-stations. Uh, given that most car companies will be EV companies by 2035, there's a big rush in building out that infrastructure and using um, a smart Technology and solar is of, of strategic use. So we've partnered with uh, Kijit, uh, K-I-G-T, uh, to uh, deploy about 100 megawatts of um, solar plus EV charging plus microgrid strategies using our technology. Um, once we get that underway, we're looking at B2B to C. So to reach the end customer, we'll be reaching out to HVACs, electricians, solar folks to be the ones that enter the home and um, sell the uh, technology, which actually increases their portfolio of services to the end client. And the last part of that B2B to C will be insurance companies, um, especially home warranty insurance companies. Now they have data uh, in order to help uh, uh, lower the cost uh, of, and, and, and improve the uh, performance of uh, that insurance uh, policy. It's kind of like Progressive has the little technology that hooks up into your car to lower your car insurance. This will be the same for your home. So those are the GDM, GTMs, one for um, our B2B and the other for our co um, commercial customer. Likewise, we're looking at partnerships with organizations such as uh, Nest uh, to bring a richer set of data to you and more controls. Uh, so we're actually in the Google for Startups Accelerator, where we are partnering with Google Nest to 
um, um, uh, under, better understand how their APIs work and we can work with them to provide the end client even a more robust solution uh, for their energy needs. Well, Reg, I want to thank you again for taking time to, to share Optimal Tech with us. Uh, if anybody has any additional questions, let us know. But if not, we can go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, again, Reg, thank you so much. Thank you all the attendees who joined Summit today. Uh, looks like we've got about 11 here that are joining. We do appreciate uh, you taking time out of your day, especially into the uh, later hours of the evening to, to join us. But we will see you next year, hopefully in person. Reg, uh, we'll talk to you short. To talk to you soon. But uh, if anybody has any questions, let us know. If not, let's go ahead and sign off. Thank you uh, all, and I appreciate you, Ian. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.